Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here for the mid-year book freakout tag. Were those in the correct order? I hope so. I will leave the original videos for this tag linked down below, but I'm pretty sure like everyone does this tag every year, so it's pretty well known and well loved. So I'm just gonna get into the questions. So the first question is the best book that you've read so far in 2018, and that is Hands Down The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This book is perfection. This book is so good. I know I've been talking about it a lot recently. It's because I still think that it's amazing. It's amazing. That's it. Question two is the best sequel that you have read so far in 2018. And I don't actually have the book with me. It is lent out, I think, to my mother. But that is Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman, the sequel to Scythe. I get really worried about second books because we still have a lot of series that have second book syndrome in them. And I feel like Scythe was just so mind-blowing that I was so nervous about, like, continuing the series and having it get worse. Thunderhead just like evolved the world so much more and it just made it so much more thought-provoking and amazing. So by far Thunderhead has been the best sequel that I've read and one of the best like series so far that I've read this year. It's so good. Question three is what new release you haven't read yet but want to? And for me that is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. I have been so excited to read this since I heard it announced like forever ago. I met the author, I got my book signed, I still haven't read it. I've heard mixed things about it, which I think is what's like preventing me from reading it, but so far most of the reviews are pretty positive. And it's like a killer mermaid siren story. It's gonna be amazing. So I just really need to get to this. Question four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year for you. And I'm gonna go with probably the most generic answer that everybody will be saying, and that is the final Throne of Glass book. Kingdom of Ash. I'm terrified for it because I have like fully jumped on the Sarah J Maas bandwagon in the past couple years as you guys have seen. I'm trash for her books. I'll read everything she comes out with but this one is like it's being built up to be so much. It's the last book in that series and that series has been around for so long and it's just gotten better and better and better and I'm terrified for it but I want it so bad. Number five is Biggest Disappointment, and for me, that is Rain the Earth by A.C. Gohan. Go Goggin? I still don't, I met her, I still don't know how to say her last name, but this book was not bad per se, and I don't want to say it's a disappointment, but it was disappointing because it wasn't as advertised, and I don't think that it's in the market that it should be. This was just a very heavy, emotionally, abusive story that I really don't think belongs in the YA market, so I feel like I went into this expecting it to be cool elemental magic and like an overthrowing of a dysfunctional throne and it was going to be like this epic amazing fantasy. Instead it just kind of ended up being like a really abusive marriage situation and it was just it was exhausting to read. It was well done, like the writing was really good, but it was not like an enjoyable story to read. So it was kind of a disappointment. I was looking for some serious avatar elemental bending type stuff and you didn't get much of that in this. Question six is the biggest surprise and for me that is The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. I wanted to like this so it wasn't surprising that I liked this but this was pretty much advertised as Hocus Pocus meets Practical Magic so you know I was gonna read it but both of those are somewhat like lighter witchcraft type stories. This book blew me away with the writing. Like the atmosphere was just so beautiful. Like this, I will read everything by Shane Earnshaw because this is her debut book and it was just breathtaking how well done it was. Oh man, I was surprised by this. It was so good. Number seven is a favorite new author. It could be a debut author or just new to you. And for me, I am going with a controversial answer for this one. I'm going with Melissa Albert who wrote The Hazelwood. This is a debut book, but it's, so it's also new to me, both things there. This got received in a very polarizing fashion. People either loved it or they hated it. I was on the loving it side and I will totally read anything that she comes out with because I like her really dark fairy tale type writing and she just seems like a very cool person and I think she's one of those authors that will get better as time goes on. I think she is just such a unique voice in the YA world because her stories are dark, at least in this one so far. And it doesn't hurt that she is obsessed with the Magicians trilogy like I am, so there's some heavy influence in this because I like books that have unlikable characters and not happy endings. So I'm definitely very excited to see what she does from here on out. Number eight is newest fictional crush. And for me, I'm a little late to this bandwagon, but I'm gonna say Kaz Brecker. 
from the Six of Crows duology because I just read these this year. So new to me, probably not new to anybody else because Kaz is like one of the most loved characters ever. And now I understand why. He's just so freaking cool. I just, I want to hang out with him really bad. So gonna say Kaz. Number nine is newest favorite character and for this I'm actually gonna go with Shiro from Red Winter. I just started the series, I've only read the first book, but his character is what is keeping me intrigued about this series. He just has a lot going for him and you kind of have the impression that you know there's a lot more to his story than what you find out in the first book. I also like that he's kind of like a Resan character where he's just cocky and like smirky and knows that he's attractive. I like characters like that. They're entertaining to read about, so I'm definitely gonna say Shiro. Question 10 is a book that made you cry, and oh my god, Far From the Tree by Robin Benway had me bawling. Like, who? I didn't know that was gonna happen going into this. I was expecting it to be like a light, fluffy contemporary read, and here I am just going through a whole box of tissues, just ugly crying through like the last two thirds of this book. I don't know what it was about this writing, but it hit me so hard. It was so good but man did I cry. <laughs> Number 11 is a book that made you happy and that was the very first book that I read in 2018 and that is Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills. This was such a pleasant surprise for YA Contemporary. I laughed through the whole thing. All of the characters were super refreshing and didn't fit any of the tropes. I loved all of the relationships and all of the individual characters. This just, it made me smile the whole time. I loved it. It was so happy. Question 12 is favorite book to movie adaptation that you've seen this year. I don't think I've seen anything new this year, so I don't really have an answer for that. Sorry, that's kind of boring. I know a lot of people will probably say Love, Simon because everybody loved that. I still haven't seen Love, Simon. I'm sure that I'll like it and I'm sure that it's going to be a good adaptation, but I just, I haven't seen it yet. So no answer for that one. Sorry, guys. Question 13 is favorite review or video if you're a booktuber that you've done this year. And I guess I have to go with the goats pick my TBR because you all loved it. I loved filming it. I like being able to involve my animals in my videos just because it's generally an entertaining filming experience. Usually what you see is probably about a tenth of what is actually filmed, like the amount of footage that I have of me just like chasing them and keeping them from knocking over my tripod is just, it's comical. So that was an entertaining video. I'll leave it linked down below if you guys haven't seen it yet but baby goats and technology don't mix very well. Number 14 is the most beautiful book that you have bought or received this year, and this is not a super new release, but I got a copy of An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard, and this book is just stunning. Like, I just, oh, I can't handle how gorgeous this book is. Just look at it. It's so pretty. I just love it so much. Have I read it yet? No, but I'll just stare at it forever. And question 15 is what book do you need to read before the end of this year? Or books? And obviously my answer for this is like all of them because I buy a lot of books. Yes, I read a lot of books, but not at the pace that I buy them. So preferably like all of the ones that I've bought, but I guess one that I really wanna get to very soon just because the hype is so real right now is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, just because I'm so intrigued by this based on how amazing the reviews are for it. So I definitely wanna get to this very soon, preferably before the end of this year. And those are all the questions. Um, going over my reading challenge so far, I always set my reading goal at 100 books for the whole year. I've made it every year for the past four years, I think. Um, so as of right now, I'm 53 books in to my reading challenge, which means I am seven books ahead of schedule, so on par for that. So I will leave the original tag video linked down below if you guys would like to do this. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you in my next video.